Monarchs, along with all other butterflies and moths, are in the insect order Lepidoptera. All Lepidoptera have four distinct stages, the egg, larva, pupa, and adult. You'll need to be able to distinguish monarchs from other organisms and be able to tell one stage from the next when you report data to the MLMP. Monarch eggs are usually attached to the underside of milkweed leaves, but not always, as you can see here. They're laid singly rather than in clusters, although it is not unusual to find more than one egg on a single plant, or even a single leaf. A monarch egg is about the size of a pinhead and is off-white. The oval-shaped egg is marked with longitudinal ridges. Its hard outer shell, or chorion, protects the developing larva. On average, monarch eggs hatch three to eight days after they're laid, with warming temperatures speeding up development. Monarchs in the next stage can be called caterpillars or larvae. Caterpillar is a more specific term for moth or butterfly larvae. Monarch larvae go through five instars. Between successive instars, the caterpillar molts or sheds its skin. After molting, monarch larvae usually eat the shed cuticle, thus recycling useful nutrients. During their nine to 16 days as larvae, monarchs increase their body mass more than 2,000 times. Monarch caterpillars have pairs of tentacles on their front and back ends. These aren't antennae, although they do have a sensory function. Caterpillar antennae are small and tucked under the head. A newly hatched monarch first instar is grayish white, shiny, and almost translucent. It has no stripes or other markings until it's eaten some milkweed. The head is black and is initially wider than the body. Neither the front nor back tentacles are visible with the naked eye. Small caterpillars feed in a circular motion to cut off the flow of milkweed latex to the part of the leaf they will feed on. Then, they chew small holes behind these moon-shaped trenches. After one to three days, the caterpillar molts into a second instar. Second instar larvae have black, yellow, and white bands. The front tentacles are visible with the naked eye, but are very short. The second instars molt after one to three days, depending on temperature. The back tentacles on the third instar are clearly visible, and if the front tentacles were folded forward, they would reach the front of the larva's head. To distinguish the instars, we use an easy rule. The back tentacles of one instar are about the same length as the front tentacles of the previous instar. For example, a third's back tentacles are about the same length as a second's front tentacles. Look carefully at the front tentacles on this third instar and imagine folding them forward to the front of its head. Third instar larvae usually feed using a distinct cutting motion on leaf edges, while the earlier instars often cut holes in the middle of the leaves. They get to be about 15 millimeters long, a little less than an inch. Depending on temperature, they molt after one to three days. Let's use this fourth instar to look more closely at monarch caterpillar legs. They have three pairs of true legs in the front and five pairs of other legs called prolegs. Unlike the third instar, the tentacles of a fourth instar extend beyond the head of the caterpillar and are about half a centimeter long. Fourth instars grow to be about 25 millimeters long, a little over an inch, and will molt again after one to three days. The body pattern and colors of fifth instar larvae are even more vivid than they were in the fourth instar, and the black bands sometimes look wider and almost velvety. The body looks quite plump, especially just prior to pupating. The tentacles of a fifth instar, about a centimeter long, sometimes look like they droop to the ground. When feeding, fifth instars often chew a shallow notch in the petiole of the leaf, which causes the leaf to fall into a vertical position. This stems the flow of the milky sap, or latex, to the leaf. Fifth instars are sometimes found far from milkweed plants as they seek a site for pupating. They grow to be almost 50 millimeters long, or almost two inches, and after three to five days, move to a safe location to form their chrysalis, or pupa. 
Now that you've learned to distinguish monarch life stages, here are a few examples to put your knowledge to the test. What do you see here? Both of these larvae are second instars. This picture illustrates why size is not the best characteristic to use in distinguishing larval instars. The larva on the right has just finished molting from the first instar. Note the light color on its head. The one on the left will soon become a third instar. While these larvae are very different in size, their front and back tentacles are nearly the same length as are their head capsules. What do you see here? The larva has recently molted into the third instar. Note how it looks like it still needs to grow into its skin. Larvae can grow during each instar because the cuticle contains a stretchable, rubber-like protein. And what's in this picture? These third and fourth instar larvae are close to the same size, but note the relative length of their tentacles. Though the third instar's body is only a little shorter and narrower than the fourth, the tentacles on the third are only about half the length of those on the fourth. Also note the difference in head size, and that the front tentacles of the third instar are about the same length as the back tentacles of the fourth. How about these two? Both of these caterpillars are fifth instars. One is brand new, and one is about ready to molt into a pupa. Their front and back tentacles and heads are similar in size. What do you see here? Sometimes a milkweed plant is bitten, bumped, or broken, and drops of the white latex may bleed out of the leaves or stem. It's easy to mistake small drops of milkweed latex for monarch eggs. Milkweed latex can range in color from bright white, as shown in this picture, to almost yellow. When in doubt, use a hand lens to check for the longitudinal ridges on the eggs. Now that you've had a bit of practice testing your larvae identification, the next section will discuss monarch adults and pupae, as well as plants important to the monarch life cycle.